Digital marketing is more important than ever for estheticians and spa owners. And that's why I'm so excited to be hosting our first virtual aesthetic marketing seminar on August 24th and 25th from 10 to 3 Eastern time. This is a live conference. We're going to be teaching you about funnels, about email marketing, about digital ads, all the things that you need to have in place as a spa owner so that you can be making money around the clock, whether that means virtual appointments or creating a system where your clients can book appointments online, selling your products through an e-commerce store, driving traffic to your website, all the things that are incredibly important, especially now more than ever, so that you can make money in your sleep. Use the internet, use technology as your own personal marketing team. We're going to show you how. I'm so excited, so passionate about this content. And the best part is that it's totally free. So I want you to click the link, get registered, and I can't wait to see you there. Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Life is good, my friends. I want you to say that with me aloud because saying things aloud can be very, very powerful. And the interview that I have for you today is just a shining example of how you can turn obstacles into opportunities. That's really an approach of life that I like to have is If an obstacle comes up, how can you turn that into an opportunity? But before we get into that, can I just ask, how many of you guys have watched The Last Dance on Netflix? It is the, it's like a 10 part docuseries about Michael Jordan and holy to moly, that has been the most motivating kick in the pants for me. I tell you what, if you have not watched that, I highly recommend you taking the time to do so. And for me, it's not like I have, I have a three month old and a three year old. So the reality of me watching TV, the time that I'm doing it, my son, Luca, the surefire way to get him to fall asleep is bouncing on one of those big exercise balls. And so every time that I'm getting him down for his nap, I've got about 20 minutes that I'm bouncing on the ball to get him down for his nap. And so I've been watching that docuseries in 20 minute intervals. So it's taken me a while, but I've gotten through it and it is so, so good. So when you watch it, there's a few main principles that I want you to take out of it. So number one, pay attention to the complete dedication, and tunnel vision that MJ has on his end goal, which is winning. So he wants to win championships and that doesn't leave his mind for one second. And that really got me thinking about our vision as business owners. So what is the end goal? If you have that goal clear in your mind and every day you're asking yourself, does this action get me closer to my vision? And if the answer is yes, okay, move forward. But if it's no, it's out. That simple behavior would completely eliminate shiny object syndrome, which so many of us have, right? It's (laughs) every one of us has gone through shiny object syndrome before, but just think about how powerful that could be if you're asking yourself that question every single day. So the next piece that was just incredible to me was how... MJ knew that this was a long game. Winning championships was a long game, but he knew what motivated him to keep moving forward. So in the docuseries, you see how just completely obsessed he is with being the best and with winning. And it's to the point where, you know, someone could, if someone even suggests that he's not the best, he uses that as fuel So there were so many points in there where someone maybe made a comment or, you know, tried to guard him or whatever, whatever happened, that was his fuel to say, no, I'm the best. I'm going to find 
whatever motivation deep down inside and prove them wrong. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be super like crazy, competitive, completely obsessed with winning, which, you know, if you are great, but the point is that you have to know what motivates you long-term. And when you went out on your own, my guess is that you wanted the freedom to create your own schedule. You wanted the freedom to, to offer the types of services that you felt most passionate about, bring in the skincare lines that you loved. You wanted the freedom to work with the clients that you wanted to work with, and also the freedom to make the money that you wanted to make. That's all super important, but you have to remember the why especially when it comes to money. So, so many estheticians get obsessed with hitting six figures and yes, that's a great milestone, but what will that money do for you, right? Money is just paper. Money is just a tool. So will that allow you to travel? Will that allow you to retire your husband? Will it allow you to purchase your dream home? So think about what hitting that milestone or having that amount of money will do. Remember the outcome. So Jordan wanted to create legacy. He wanted to be in the category of Larry Bird, of Magic Johnson. He wanted to be the best of the best. He wanted to give 100% of the time his all so he could see what he was truly capable of. Okay, and the final thing that really hit me about Michael Jordan in this docu-series was his ability to stay in the present moment. Now, they were talking about how NBA players often cripple under the pressure because they're worried, you know, like, are they going to fail? Are they, you know, are they going to miss the basket? Whatever. There's got to be a lot of pressure there that, you know, I just can't even comprehend. But MJ's response was, Why am I going to worry about a basket that I haven't even taken a shot on yet? And that is mindset, my friends. So how many of you are self-sabotaging right now? You're not taking actions to follow your dream of opening a spa, of moving into the education space, of launching your e-commerce store, whatever your dream is, because deep down inside, you're afraid you're going to fail. You're afraid you're going to be judged. So here's the deal, newsflash, you will be judged and you might fail, but you might also succeed. And I want you to know, to truly know that if you did fail, and I'm using air quotes here because every failure is truly, it's simply a learning experience in our journey as entrepreneurs. That doesn't mean anything about your value as a person. In fact, in my opinion, it really is a positive attribute because at least you tried, right? At least you got out there. You put yourself out there. You went for your dreams. So that's actually just a really nice transition into our guest today on the podcast. Her name's Kate. She's the owner of Glow Beauty Bar in Massachusetts. And I wanted to bring her on the show because she just showed up in such a huge way during the shutdowns. And in doing so, found an incredibly lucrative new stream of revenue in her business. Now, Kate is in our Spa Retail Rockstar program. She, on top of all the added stresses of having your business, you know, trying to keep it afloat, keep the doors open when you're closed for 12 weeks, she not only was keeping her business afloat, she found this whole new stream of revenue and had to really piece that together and work out logistics. But she also found the time to share what was working for her and what wasn't working for her inside of our private Facebook group, our Spa Retail Rockstar group, which is just such an incredible group of women, something I'm I'm so proud of. And when I say what was working for Kate, Kate was able to generate $55,000 in product sales by creating beauty boxes. So it's all in the packaging and the presentation. So if you wanna know how she did it, listen in to this interview. 
All right, Kate, I'm so excited to have you on the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Thank you for joining today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I wanted to bring you on because you're in our Spa Retail Rockstar program. And I went through, you know, I had a baby right at the very beginning of this shutdown with coronavirus. And I was spending so much time online and seeing what everybody was doing. And you just stood out as someone who was such a leader, who was really like, showing, Hey, I'm an entrepreneur and this is crazy, but I'm not going to let this destroy my business. And you were just so creative and so innovative and have had incredible success. And during that entire time, we're super positive and an inspiration to so many of our students. And so I wanted to have you on the show to really talk about number one, kind of what was going through your mind when coronavirus, when the shutdowns first started? Like, how did you feel when, when we were getting those orders of, you know, we're closing our businesses? Like, what was your, did you go into a space of fear or an immediate space of action? Or what was your, your emotional state? Fight or flight, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like when you're scared about something. Thing, either like freeze or you take action and you kind of not really feel fight or flight but um I think I, I really just had to refocus and close my eyes and envision what what I could do um while we were closed to keep my staff and myself eating and having our mortgages paid and taking care of our children and um taking care of ourselves and um And I, I was so freaked out because I had just came from your conference where I was like, I'm buying a $10,000 facial machine. And I did. (laughs) And, um, I had messed up and ordered the cap. It's an Oxygenia machine, which I'm obsessed with, but I ordered the capsules and I didn't realize there's five facials in one box. So five treatments in one box. And I ordered 150 boxes. Oh, wow. Right. So now I've got thousands of products for, you know, this machine. I said, okay, well, and I had so much retail. I had just restocked my shelves with so much retail. Um, so it was crazy. I was like, well, what are we going to do? We got to get this product off the shelves. So So, let me, let me just rewind real quick for those, those that don't know you, you're the founder owner of Glow Beauty Bar. Tell us a little bit about your business. Like how many employees you have, what you guys specialize in, where you're located, just so people can have an idea. Sure. So I am in Northampton, Massachusetts, which is a really funky, artsy city. Um, uh, It has five private colleges, or three of them are private, but five colleges within 10 minutes of this city. So very- I feel like that's all Massachusetts. There's just like colleges everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We got some major hospitals, but I would say education is what draws people here. Um, so I would say my client base are, and we have two huge hospitals in the area. So I would say my clientele base is, um, students, grad students, professors, and yeah, um, very earth conscious, very, um, earthy and like very not somewhere that I thought I would be a very successful spa owner, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I have four estheticians. I had four massage therapists pre COVID. Um, I have four hairstylists and then I own a second company and I have, um, eight women that work for me in that company. It's called Glow Bridal and we're an on location hair and makeup company. So I have, um, eight women that work for me in that company. Very cool. So that's a lot of overhead, right? That's a, a, decent sized business, a lot of overhead that you're having to cover. You just made an investment in this machine. You've got tons of retail on your shelves and then there's the shutdown. And so what you had your fight or flight, what did you end up doing to really kind of cover, make sure that your team is eating, make sure that you're keeping, keeping your doors open during the shutdown? 
So um, I had all this inventory on the shelves and I knew it was going to go bad. So I did a 15% off sale and drove a lot of customers in to get products um, the last two days before we closed. And then I was shipping out products, but I was just shoving stuff into priority mail bags. Um, and it just wasn't cohesive or organized. And I was spending so much time going to the post office and back. And then I started putting stuff in really pretty bags with tissue paper. So like up to the ante a little bit. So people got the gift and they were like, wow, this is really nice. And I just, you know, had beautiful wrapping. Um, and then I kept on running out of bags and tissue paper. It was just like, I was, people were ordering so much. I was just going to all the local stores trying to get as much as I could, but I really didn't want to be going out as much as I was. So then I got even smarter and started ordering from Uline. It's a, like a warehouse almost full of just office supplies and they have every packing material you could possibly want. Um, so I bought thousands of boxes, small and large and then thousands of pieces of tissue paper stacked. So my logo is black and gold. So I did black boxes, gold tissue paper, and then I had custom labels made for the boxes. Um, and then everything kind of got nicer and nicer and nicer into what it was at the end, which is um, this beautiful box that they opened up that had so many items in it and then specific facial care or hair care that I custom um, customized to that person or the person they were giving it to. But then you created, you had three different boxes in the mm -hmm. end, right? There was a hair box, yep. a body box and a skin box, right? Yep. And we still have that. Okay. So that's so cool. Like I love all these, it, you know, one of the things I say often is that you're always leaving money on the table. And I think that with coronavirus, with the shutdowns, there were so many spas and estheticians that have found like, wow, this was working so well. I'm going to keep this going even when we're reopened. And that's something that you guys are going to continue to do with these boxes. So, so the week that we closed, March 23rd to March 31st, I did $10,000 in boxes in one week. For the month of April, I did $19,000 in boxes. Wow. Wow. For the month of May, I did 15, like 15, seven, 15,700. And then for two weeks in June, or it was like two and a half weeks before we opened, I did $11,300 in boxes. So my total in boxes from March 23rd to June 21st was $55,297. That is that incredible. Is incredible. I thought it was pretty cool. So you know, let's talk about how you were actually selling these. Sure. What were you doing? Because of you, I had done my e-commerce as soon as I came back from our, our conference. Okay. Our seminar was like, totally inspired me to get on e-commerce. And I set it all up. And then two weeks later, COVID hit. So I had it all ready to go. Oh, and, I'm so um, glad. Yeah. Thank you for that. Like you really <laughs> saved me in so many ways. Cause I know a lot of people were scrambling to get their e-commerce, but they're also scrambling to like figure out how to redo their entire business while, you know, during a pandemic. So I didn't mm -hmm. have to do any of that. It was completely done, ready to go. Um, really streamlined and structured. So all I really had to do is, um, you know, you just have to keep on top of like the, the inventory matching. But, mm -hmm. um, besides that, it was really great. I had all the orders come in and it was um, curbside pickup. So no contact pickup or it was delivery. Um, and I did charge for delivery, like I, for shipping. Cause I'm like, you know what? It's expensive. I had people yeah. ordering, sometimes people ordering four boxes because they wanted one, but they wanted to give them one to their Grammy, one to their sister, one to, you know, so I'd be shipping four boxes to California in a larger box, but that's $28 to $35 for me to ship. So, and not a single person bad at their eyelashes when I was like, it's $8 and 40 cents, but it's priority and it's going to be, you know, taken care of taken care of if anything happens to it. Yeah. Cause that shipping will really eat into your, into your profit, profit margins. margins. Yeah. 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 So, um, but what were you doing to sell? Cause I, I know what you were doing, but I want oh. you to share because it was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It was on, because of you again, I was on social media every single day doing video marketing. Um, I got a ring light. I got another ring light. Um, I got a photo 
box. So I was putting products in a photo box and professionally taking it. I got the new iPhone 11 plus. So I had a really nice camera on my phone. I had the good lighting. So I took pictures of every single thing that was on, on my shelves and I taught you how to use it. I talked to you and I educated you about why peptides were peptides, what an acne facial does, what this lip plumper is, what's in what the ingredients are, how it looks on you, how to wash your face, how to brush your hair. Like we just, I was really honestly like talking about anything. And, um, it was so fun. The feedback that I got where they, this is the only thing I watch on Facebook every day because our world is so dark right now. And I just want something to smile and make me feel good. And like, you make me feel you, really good. You were just every day, every day, every day, every day, you were consistent. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and I remember you saying you had posted something in our group to share with all the other members, like the success that you were having. And you just said, look, I'm just putting all my energy into social media. If I'm not going to be running my business, I'm a hundred percent on social media every day, every day. And it was just incredible to see because you got, um, clients in multiple States that were not even clients of your spa, right? It was yes. new, whole new people that not everyone even Massachusetts, was not just yeah, they, everywhere. I hit, I hit, I would say most of the, most of the States I hit, I, there was a couple of States that I didn't hit. Um, but I'm going to work on those States. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People, it was great. People were sharing my, my feed to their feed. So then people would be like in Oklahoma and they would say, Oh my God, I saw you on my friend's feed and you were so interesting and I don't have anything like that around here. And can you help me? Um, and I was like, please let me help you. I'm a, like, what else do I have going on? Like, I want to talk about skin 24 seven if I can. So it was so exciting and fun for me. And you know, it was also a lot of work. It was, it wasn't yeah. easy to like get up and think of content every day and be super well, exposed. And, and on a, camera. You know, I know that you have a son and it's like, you want to be there for your family, but you also have to show up for your business. And, and it is kind of a, an interesting time, but you were able to keep that positive mindset and really just say, Hey, like, this is what I'm doing. And you really were like, just such a shining light that I think people really resonated with that. And were like, yeah, like, I don't want to read every day, the new numbers of COVID, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it's like, I want to do something for myself. And, and I'm that I think the, the estheticians and spa owners that really focused on positivity and education and consistently showing up have had incredible results. Incredible I agree. Results. I, um, I had met Ellery and Tanya and we bonded really well at the, your conference and we helped each other find items for the boxes, find manufacturers, um, tissue paper, Tanya's bags, if you've seen her bags, they're gorgeous. I'm like, oh. Tanya, those bags are really nice. And she's like, they're really expensive. <laughs> and she's like, you're, you're doing it much better than I am on your packaging because I'm spending a lot of money. So we just talked about that kind of stuff. Because tissue paper, how much is it per, per piece? And the boxes and then having them shipped. And you know, all of that stuff goes into it where your profit margin. At first, I was giving people way too much stuff. I didn't know what I was doing. And I wanted it off my shelves. I'm like, oh, if they're addicted to this biosol cream, then they'll come back and use it. Um, so that was definitely a mistake, but I learned, you know, you like just like how I was going to the post office too much, or I wasn't packaging, packaging it correctly. Like, you know, I learned that, um, I could package it differently and, and save about 40 cents on shipping, you know, if I packaged it a little bit differently in a different bag or, you know, priority mail bag. So that stuff, you definitely, it's, it's trial and error. So what's your plan moving forward? I know you're going to keep these boxes, but like, how are you going? Is this something you're going to scale? Like what's, what's the next steps for you with these beauty boxes? Yes. I'm going to keep doing, um, right now I don't have as much body stuff. I think it's a little hard to, harder to find, but I'm going to, I started your, the live recording yesterday for uh, private labeling and I'm going to find a private label company that does more body care. And then mm -hmm. I can focus my energy more into a body box. I am finishing up my private labeling because of you. Um, I had started private labeling, um, when I got my EIDL loan. So okay. I was like, well, I have this grant and it's lower than any credit card I could ever put the, the um, private label order on. And as you know, the MOQs are pretty high. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it in one big bulk order and I'm having my labels made right now. I have half of the order in. Awesome. That's 
turning out really fun. I can't wait to show you that. Um, and I'm going to le- go with one other lab that I know of um, that she mentioned on your podcast yesterday or a couple of days ago, excuse me, um, and fill in some products there. And then I'm going to work with someone else to get some body, a bo- private label body line. So I'm still going to do the face box, the body box and the hair box. Um, and then now I'm working with like a lo- local jeweler, a couple different local jewelers. Um, I had some beautiful, I don't have them on today, but I have these beautiful earrings that I was putting in the boxes. Oh. Um, so I'm going to try to work with them on maybe getting a little bit of a better deal if I order in a larger amount. Um, and just doing stuff that's a little different. A guy friend of mine from California was adding crystals into his boxes. Yeah, it's super. Po- you should go to Box Fox. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they do like gift boxes. And they have one that has a crystal in there and a candle. They do a lot of the um, the Makara candles, you know, that you see a lot yes. in spa. Um, yeah. So it'll be like those and crystals and like oils and stuff like that. But they're so popular and for like corporate gifts. I mean, there's so many directions that you can go with this once you figure out. Yeah. Your system. I reached out to um, BMW and Mercedes of West Springfield. I reached out to um, an insurance company. I reached out to some banks. I reached out to the head of the Chamber of Commerce and I said, um, sponsor me. Good like you. buy a hundred boxes from me. Let's talk about you all over the internet, how you sponsored and give them to front frontline workers. I said, you're going to give me a hundred dollars, which is nothing for you guys. You're going to have it as a tax write off. You're supporting a local business. And then we can ship them to women in need or men in need. Um, so I had a couple people take me up on that. So we got, some, nurse, we got yeah, some nurses. You know, the worst thing that they're going to say is no, no. Yeah. So I went live on, um, social media, uh, with Mercedes of West Springfield. And I got so many new clients from that, that, that stream. Oh, I'm so happy. That's wonderful. Yeah. And then I donated, I think it was around a hundred boxes. They were minis. They weren't the $99 boxes, but I donated around a hundred boxes to the nurses at the local hospital. So that got us a lot of new clients. And I put a brochure in every single, um, box. That's so I was like, you know, remember us when this is over. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I got them was these beautiful headbands that have two buttons, one on each over their ear. So their, their masks clip to the button, but they have this beautiful headband on to keep their hair back. So they don't, they wasn't pulling on their ear all day long. Oh, that's great. I know my husband hates the things on his ear. So he's like, yeah. drives him nuts. I, I think like 10 hours a day of wearing it, it like was causing like abrasions and stuff on their, on their ears. So they were like, thanks. And I think my next pivot is going to be doing a box for people that are wearing the masks and have the mask knee problem right now. Mm -hmm. So like, let me do a mask knee box because now we're in the mode of we're wearing them every day. You know, when it first started, we weren't even wearing masks. Right. So yeah. So that's that's awesome. Someone asked me to do a baby boxes, like products for babies. I know my sister-in-law sent me a, she, it's called a bump box. I love the bump box. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, It's really nice. So yeah. So I have some new, new things in my brain and like, you know, pairing with a jewelry person and, um, body, new body line with my, all my products in there. I have candles that I just brought in. So I'm doing candles and boxes now. And, you know, just trying to think of what you want to do when you're home. I've, I don't know if anyone's talked to you about this, but I've never talked so much about sheet masks. Like I couldn't even, <laughs> I could sell a sheet mask maybe one, like a week, like a, this woman would be like, Oh, I'm really into skincare. Let me buy a sheet mask. But now I can't even keep them on the shelves. Like sheet yeah. masks or everyone's doing them during COVID. So yep. everyone, that loves was them. Fun. everyone yeah. loves them. So, yeah. okay. So what bit of advice would you give to estheticians out there and spa owners out there who maybe are just struggling a little bit with the shutdown? And just this time, like how, what was kind of driving you to stay positive and be creative? Mm, Lots of different things. Um, I think the main drive that I have to stay positive and creative is that I didn't want to have built this beautiful brand and have it like shut down. I really wanted to keep this open and I wanted to make people feel good while we were unable to pamper them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if our job is to make people feel good and we just love this industry and we love making people, you know, look better and feel better about themselves and how could I continue that while we were closed while continuing to make a profit while continuing, continuing to be successful 
while continuing to pay my bills and not let my employees go. So I, was, I think that just was for me. I'm like, how can I create this brand and just pivot my business into being something that I always have wanted this, but now I'm doing it in a different avenue. And now that I've done that avenue, it's super exciting and fun. Like, who doesn't want it? For me, I love doing things that are like challenging mm -hmm. and a facial isn't challenging for me anymore. So like now I'm like, all right, let's go to this, you know, to this whole <laughs> new business level. Um, oh, so yeah. So exciting. So exciting. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah. Well, let everyone know where they can find you and follow you if they want to keep in touch with what you're doing. Please. I would love that. Um, so my Facebook page is glowbeautybar.ma, as in Massachusetts. And my Instagram page is glowbeautybar.ma. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Kate. I think it's awesome what you're doing. I love the positivity and congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Danielle. It's a huge thanks to you. And I'm so happy you had me on.